Good morning. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's July the 28th. That could be only one thing. It's time for What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and today's title of the show is U.S. to follow France to combat the unvaccinated. Uh, you know, a couple of days ago, French President Macron said the following. I'm in favor of the French line right now. I no longer have any intention of sacrificing my life, my time, my freedom for those who refuse to be vaccinated. This time, they should stay home, not us. Well, that's pretty, um, pretty dramatic, pretty uh, black and white. And that's something that uh, the United States, either President Biden or uh, former President Trump, would be um, hesitant to do, to say to the American people. Uh, Macron also said the following. I'm aware that of what I'm asking of you. I know that you're ready for this commitment. This is, in a sense, part of your sense of duty. And uh, on this show, we've talked many times before about Americans and whatever happened to our, our, our compact with one another, our, our social obligations to our fellow Americans. Uh, we certainly knew that it was strong in World War II and in the other conflicts, and it was certainly a, a country that came together during 9-11. But uh, we now have a virus that's killed over 611,000 Americans. And yet we have maybe almost a third of our population who are refusing to be part of the solution to combat this virus. And it's not just the COVID virus anymore, it's the Delta virus, far more transmissible, far more virulent, and far more deadly. So um, let's address this. Let's address what France has done, and let's compare it to what the United States might or might not do in the future as we combat the Delta variant. But before we do, I'd like to introduce our guests. This morning, we have Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning, one and all. Good morning, Tim. Hey, Jay. French President Macron is, um, is really putting it to him. He's saying, I'm done. I've had enough. We've had multiple shutdowns, up and down. The economy has been racked. And now we're at a point where we can diminish or, or you know, clamp down on this, this Delta variant, and um, I need cooperation from the French people to do so. So I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure that you can't go in any public restaurant, you can't go any public museums, any public uh, government facilities, anything that's public, if you don't have a vaccination or proof of vaccination, you're not coming in. Pretty bold. What do you think? Great. <clears throat> Wonderful. Um... And, you know, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, my momentum theory on this. I'll tell you what it is. Um, and I have a rhetorical question for you. Uh, the momentum theory is that Trump started all of this because he made us question government. He, made, he, he, he was skeptical of government. He was skeptical about, um, you know, the disease. And you know, uh, even though he, it was under him that they worked on the vaccine, uh, somehow, all that skepticism crossed over into the vaccine itself. And, and his skepticism has a momentum to it. And we're still having that. His base still um, carries that around. And um, as I was telling you before the show, Tim, I believe it's, it's a gradient. Uh, his base is not a, a bright red line. It's not a sharp line. There are people who are not, strictly speaking, in his base maybe outside of his space, who are also, he used the term, infected by this kind of skepticism. Skepticism about science, about the CDC, about medical research. He created it. And we're living under that now, including people who were not in his space. It's terrible. Uh, but my, my rhetoric, that's my momentum theory. Um, but the rhetorical question or idea I have for you um, is this. Had there been another president back then, had Trump been a reasonable human being and not such a jerk, um, had he, the president or she, uh, said, look, we have an emergency on our hands. We have to treat it as an emergency. We have to wear masks. I'm going to make a national mandate on masks. I'm going to, I'm going to make this a national issue. I'm not going to fob it off on the states the way Trump did. Um, and I'm and I'm and I'm going to require you um, to take the vaccine. I mean, I think Biden should do that now. Um, you have to take it, and I'm going to make it clear that you have to take it. I'm, I'm going to do what Macron has done last week. Um, had this happened, this kind of 
attitude, this kind of take charge attitude back in March of 2020, would we be having this conversation? People would have recognized it as an emergency um, and they would have abided by the national government uh, as, as their protector. But somewhere along the line, it got really screwed up. And now um, they don't. And it, it, the tragedy is it didn't have to be this way. Right. We could have had solutions all over the place if we'd only come together. Trump divided us on this, yeah. and we are still having the division. Let me let me um, explore your rhetorical question because it, it was a good one. Because on this show, and, and for for many years while we've been doing these shows, uh, we talked about the nature of propaganda, and we have sliced and diced the elements of propaganda and how it works and why it works. But it's, let me suggest one of the things about why we're not um, fully invested in vaccination as a population is because when you when you hear propaganda initially, you believe the first lie. And it takes far more much momentum and energy and messaging of the truth for you to just dislodge yourself from the initial lie that you believed. And that is the power of propaganda. And I suggest, or, or, or I, it's my theory that most people listen to that first big lie that the COVID virus was a, a hoax. It was a democratic plot to undermine the president of the United States and his chances for reelection. And it's a, you know, it's a government plot to, uh, you know, make sure that you comply and it's not necessary. And that's the lie they believe. And that's the lie that they can't shake. And that's why I think um, we are so resistant in getting a 70% compliance of vaccinations in this country, particularly, of course, in the red states. Yeah, well, yeah, I totally agree. That's, that's my, my view of it also. Um, and you know, there's, there's been quotes on that very point. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's relatively easy to set up a propaganda lie. It's much more difficult to reverse it, even if the person who wants to reverse it is the same person uh, who set up the propaganda lie in the first place. Um, and that's why, you know, Macron's um, message and his, um, you know, national, national proclamation on these points uh, has met some resistance uh, in France. Um, because um, it didn't happen right away, and because Trump's lie, Trump's propaganda affected more than just the United States. It affected everywhere. This is the kind of leadership he provided for the free world. Um, and so Macron has a burden of, of running up uphill against that lie, that propaganda. And he's suffering it, and, and we're suffering it too. I mean, even the reversal of the CDC uh, mask, um, you know, ruling the last one that uh, uh, that they put out, which we all thought we here all thought was a mistake at the time. The reversal of that is hard, and people are opposing it, objecting to it. What about my freedoms, my liberties, all that kind of poppycock? And uh, and so it's always hard to go back after you've lied to them. And right. we're having the same experience that Macron is having. Okay, thank you, Jay. Hey, Winston, um, and Joe Biden is maybe tomorrow make an announcement. Uh, he's certainly doing it with the Veterans Administration that all federal facilities will require a vaccination before you enter the premise. Um, good idea. And then the second part of my question is, could Joe Biden try to pull off what Macron is doing in France? And that is to say all public facilities, whether it be government, uh, city, county governments, or just private industry, you um you ought to stay out of those institutions we're not going to force you to get a vaccination but we are going to force you from entering those premises so that you could potentially uh, infect the uh, those who aren't vaccinated and well infect those that are vaccinated because there's the crossroads there's the you know the the point where people who are vaccinated are coming down with covid what do you think uh Anything, any steps are, are in the right direction. So if he starts it with just federal buildings and courthouses and um, those sorts of things and says, if you're not vaccinated, then you must get a test before you enter this facility. And and I don't see any reason why we shouldn't spread that to uh, airlines. But if they don't spread it to airlines, then maybe we need to have completely separate facilities for people that are vaccinated. Um, but 
I think the, the route that we're seeing is not that it's going to it, it's the tide has turned. You're seeing the shifts in people that were vaccine hesitant before already moving in the direction of being vaccinated because they can see this is real. Um, you know, as, as what we're doing here in Hawaii, I saw UH Manoa, 95 percent of the faculty and staff are vaccinated. Ninety two percent are vaccinated. This the university has said, if you are not vaccinated as a student, OK, you can still be a student, but you're not going to be able to participate in a lot of activities or, uh, you know, have hold certain jobs. And it, and even if you uh, and that aside, you will not have a full student experience, I think, is the, the, how they phrase it, something along those lines. And they also said that uh, you have to be tested every single week. And I think that is a that's perfectly reasonable at this stage. One thing that you didn't mention when when Macron said that, and it, again, we are having to look. Uh, I'm happy to see the the French and the Germans standing up as leaders of the free world too, so that Joe Biden doesn't have to shoulder it all. He's dealing with the very, Joe Biden's dealing with also a very difficult population where maybe half only half the population has been vaccinated. Where you have the governor of Missouri saying he will fight any laws that um, have people wear masks. Where you have five states where it's forbidden for children to wear masks in schools. These are insane laws that are being promulgated across the nation. So as uh, Macron also said, um, he said, we cannot make those who have a civic sense to get vaccinated bear the burden of inconvenience. That's what Macron said. The restrictions will weigh on others. Those who for reason incomprehensible in the country of Louis Pasteur science and the enlightenment still hesitate to use the only weapon available against the pandemic the vaccine that is true it's still the only weapon we have except complete isolation and quarantine and he's just saying no i'm i'm not staying at home anymore you are if you don't want to go out and eventually um i'm not sure how it's going to play out but i could see that um that increasingly you know our governor even in hawaii he's saying He's going to have a, a looking at a mandate for that. I think people are really they're waiting for the F, uh, FDA to give full approval to this vaccination. And then they'll say everyone in the military has to get it. Uh, and and the courts have already found that you can require this for your workers. So I, I, I think that the move is already going to be there. And people that don't get this are just going to be increasingly marginalized and shut out of the public sphere. You know, um, this this battle between Americans who are vaccinated and Americans who are not. I mean, when I was on the East Coast for 30 days, um, you know, some of these states were 75, 80, 85 percent vaccinated. And I, you know, I heard horrible things um, from my fellow Americans about those who are not vaccinated. And I've heard them in all sorts of circles, um, friends and all sorts of circles. And it, the one that really hurts my heart the most is well that's their choice you know if they're if they're so ignorant they don't want to get it and if they die from from the the delta variant well won't that just mean one less voter in 2022 and although it may be true there may be a lot less uh gop voters because they've perished or or impaired by the delta variant that's a hell of a statement to say about our fellow american but yet i hear it over and over again i'm hearing it more and more times um, what does this whole effect of the vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated Winston have upon our, 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 the polarity, the polarization of America? Well, it's, it's a sad indictment of what we just experienced the last four years where people can be uh, tricked into saying that black is white and white is black or up is down and down is up. And unfortunately, it falls more disproportionately on, uh, our Republican, uh, compatriots here. And that's that's a real tragedy because this is not a partisan virus. It's not seeking out people who are Republicans or Democrats or independents. It's seeking out humans. It's seeking out all people who live in this country, whether you're a uh, resident alien, whether you're undocumented, whether you're a citizen, it doesn't matter. You need to get vaccinated. Uh, I think people are waking up to that. They're waking up to it. It also feeds into, well, what else have I been lied about? So perhaps this is going to be helping to open eyes um, you know, the, the one poll that I thought was um, telling was in uh, uh, the Newsweek, and it was, a, it was a poll that was conducted by The Economist and uh, YouGov. And sadly, it says that, that um, 
most people feel less than one in 10 trust medical advice from Dr. Fauci of the vaccine uh, deniers or vaccine uh, rejectors, and only one in five trust the CDC. This is really hard to come over that because they suggest that in the same poll that perhaps, or in another poll that was uh, put out by uh, Forbes, I believe it was, on uh, who's, who, who is refusing this. And they're, they're making it in terms of Republicans, but in fact, it's not just Republicans. I know people on all sides of the spectrum who are um, believing uh, things about this vaccine that are not true. And uh, how you counter that when there's such little faith or trust in government is a real problem. And, and, and the, the Forbes article, which was on uh, July 28th about who is most likely to refuse COVID-19 vaccine, suggests that we need to go into communities of faith um, where the intersectionality of uh, vaccine deniers and uh, you know, Fox watchers or um, uh, religious groups or QAnon supporters and uh, the whole nine yards, how we try and penetrate that. But if at the end of the day, when people start getting shut out of Costco or their workplace or other things, it's going to make a lot of people very mad. Um, and that's one thing that we got to uh, expect. But I think Macron's right that at some point you have to put your civic duty above your, uh, your partisan or irrational or just plain, just ignorant uh, feelings and thoughts. Right. Thank you very much, Winston. Cynthia, you know, um, some time ago, remember the day when Donald Trump called a national emergency and that was over the border wall and he, he was able to secure all sorts of things he normally couldn't secure under the guise of a national emergency. I'm not sure if we're in a national emergency right now with COVID. I think I recall one a long time ago, but I don't know if it's still in force. But if it's not in force, what's to prevent Joe Biden from declaring a national emergency and relate it to the Delta variant and um, do some things that normally presidents don't get to do, and that is make hard and fast uh, guidelines that people don't like. But for the, in the, the good of the nation and the good of uh, the health and welfare of the nation, uh, these national emergencies are, are used from time to time in our history. Uh, what Macron did is, again, very difficult, uh, particularly for the United States, where people are very conscientious of their individual rights and freedoms. And uh, no one can um, make me get my vaccination. But uh, how do you feel Joe Biden is doing? Do you think he should go that step of Macron and say it's not just going to be federal buildings, but it's going to be all public entities that will uh, require vaccination or proof of vaccination before you enter? What do you think? I think starting with federal agencies is the place to start. And I heard um, a message earlier while I was getting ready on the TV that was, he was saying that he is going to institute it, not, not tomorrow or the next day to make the, the announcement. He made it this morning, it's going to happen. And if you won't take the vaccine, you will have rigorous testing that you must submit to. And I think that's important because the statistics are pretty staggering. New cases are up 65% since last week. Deaths are up 22% since last week. That's a, <clears throat> we only have a 49.3% fully vaccinated percentage here in this country. We've got <clears throat> six states in this country that are under 30% or under 40% that are all in the 30s in their percentile of vaccination rates. Um, of course, they're all the typical states that you expect, the red states, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, but then you got Idaho and Wyoming in there too. And then, you know, we've got the big high ones that are all in that Northeast corner, like you were talking about where you were on vacation, Tim. They're all, you know, way in the high 60s or 70 percent now. Hawaii, hate to say it, guys, we're only at 53.3%. And I wonder, does that have something to do with our large military contingent that's here? You know, we've got five active bases. So um, once we get that federal mandate in place, then our, of course, our numbers are going to go way up. Um, well, let's go, to, let's go to what Winston said about, you know, some of the sourcing of, of where people get their information and therefore correlates to their resistance to vaccinations. And certainly um, certain news sources, Fox, 
uh, some social media websites. We know that they've been spreading disinformation. Allegedly, they're trying to clean it up. Uh, we have Newsmax. We have you know a whole pocket of, of, of sources where people are tuning in and it's confirming the big lie they believed in when Donald Trump said, this is a democratic hoax back in March of 2020. Uh, what should be the consequences for these sources that continually um, misguide, misinform, and quite frankly, lie about the nature of the Delta variant, COVID, and the vaccination itself? What kind of consequences ought to be levied out for these institutions? Well, I think they could come- If any, if any. I mean, I'm not saying there should, but if any. So I say, yes, there should be. They should be severe. They should be extreme because they're killing people. And so the, the you know, consequence should be big too. Um, it should start with massive fines. And if those don't work, then just shut them down if you can. Make them become an opinion station instead of a news station. And I think if we could just get that established better, maybe it would be easier to go in I was reading a, and make a difference, I guess. I, I was reading an article just this last week about looking into some of these, the, the people that are the least vaccinated and the percentages of people that are the least vaccinated. And they went in, they looked at all the churches and most of the mainstream churches did not show a lower percentage of vaccinated people until you get to the, um, the you know, the, the, born again Christians, the holier than thou conservative Christians, you know, um, these people are really extreme and they are the ones that watch One and Newsmax and Fox and all that. And those are the people they say that have the least percentage of vaccinations. And then the QAnon folks are the ones that have the least of all. And it just kind of goes down the list. From okay. So you know, I, again, I think Winston accurately described the sources of the disinformation. And I guess I go to the question is, what can President Biden or President Biden's administration do about it? Uh, Jay, I take that to you. Um, you know, can he declare a national emergency and say you're working against the interests of the United States? Uh, you're working against ultimately the economy and the welfare of this country. Under a national emergency scenario, can President Biden start imposing sanctions, penalties, uh, ramifications for those sources that are, are working against the, the, the national best interest? I think we have an emergency. I'm not sure that entitles him to do anything more than if he didn't have an emergency. Um, but I think he's been soft. He's been soft on the mask. Um, he's, you know, he's, he's doing a tiptoe. Um, and he's saying, I, I don't want to influence my agencies. Well, come on, we, you know, look to him for leadership. Influence the agencies. It's okay. Tell the agencies we want a, ma a mask proclamation. We want the CDC or the whatever it is, uh, I guess the CDC, um, to, to um, at least suggest that masks be everywhere now. Um, I, I don't know why we don't do that. And the vaccine thing, like Macron, absolutely he should do that. And he should do it at every level of the federal government, everywhere that he can reach as the leader of the federal government. Um, and, you know, it's really shameful that the military doesn't have a regulation. <clears throat> they control the lives of their troops. They can implement a regulation along those lines instantaneously. Um, and it would be completely and in, in, uh, irrefutably legal uh, for national defense. Uh, I, I cannot imagine why he's being soft. He's got to be harder like Macron. He should follow Macron. But there's one other thing, and I sent you guys uh, a Wikipedia article uh, on Section 230 of the Federal Communications uh, Statute that was adopted. Um, and uh, 230 uh, gives immunity uh, to uh, the, the networks um, to the media, including social media, uh, for uh, lies that they promulgate, with very few exceptions. And um, that is a critical hole in the boat here. Um, there have been moves to try to change that in the courts, not completely successful, um, and uh, in the Congress. Um, if that were changed, repealed, amended, what have you, so uh, to make the media 
legally responsible to citizens who are affected by lies. You know, it's not only COVID, it's all kinds of other lies. <laughs> yes. that these media, you know, but, but COVID is a really good example. So, hey, what happened to Uncle, Uncle John? Uh, he died of COVID. Uh, didn't he get a vaccine? No, he was watching Newsmax and they told him not to. And he relied on Newsmax, didn't take the vaccine. He was uh, immune, you know, immune vulnerable and he died. <clears throat> well, isn't that, doesn't that sound like a good cause of well, action? You know, Jay, the you hit the nail on the head. That under that provision, Section 230, uh, Uncle John cannot sue because it wasn't Facebook or Twitter or any media that said that. They were really republishing what somebody else put on their platform. If yeah. you change Section 230, that, that changes. And all of a sudden, Uncle John can take a whack legally at, at the people who prop, propagated the lie. Now, this is very important for us. And we, we have let social media, and for that matter, media like, like Fox News and Newsmax run away with us. You, you've been asking, Tim, um, you know, why, why are they backing off? Why, is, uh, why are the newscasters, uh, opinion casters on Fox News um, softening their position on taking, not taking the vaccine? I think, I think the reason is they're afraid that there's going to be some lawsuits against them uh, where people died. Um, th this sounds to me just as an intuitive matter, um, like, like it should happen. Uh, I think it probably needs some legal impetus from the president. Um, but one way or the other, we have got to get that crap off these social media and network platforms. Well, two points, Jay, is remember the voting machines. Um, I forget the name of the company, but they, they are suing Fox and some of the, uh, the pundits uh, for billions of dollars because of the misinformation about the voting machines and how they are rigged. And that is uh, damaged through defamation, their company. So those, those lawsuits, as you suggest, are, are actually taking place right now. Uh, the second point is, you know, remember Donald Trump tried to abolish Rule 230, but he, he didn't do it on, you know, because he was concerned about the American public and the, um, the COVID virus. He was upset because they blocked him from, <laughs> from being on, on their airwaves and, and from the social media. So that's why he wanted 230 abolished so that he could sue him and force himself back on the airwaves. Yeah, I would distinguish uh, the voting machine situation. Because in that case, the networks had no evidence whatsoever to back up the defamation. They are sitting pretty for a, a multi-billion dollar judgment on that. And um, good, good for the guys who were suing them. Uh, the case, the case of Uncle John, and uh, you know how he died from COVID is a little different, because in that case we're talking about uh, these platforms uh, propagating lies from someone else, and that's that's the whole impetus on fixing 230. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I think one way, see, the government under the First Amendment cannot come in and start uh, vetting the information um, that's going to the public. That would be a, a clear First Amendment problem. Um, so the, the real solution is to find a way um, to have the individuals who are being harmed, namely you and me and anyone who has been either defamed um, or, you know, or hurt or killed by COVID uh, to, to do a class action uh, or some kind of legal proceeding in the courts. That would change everything. And regrettably, uh, Congress right now is, um, you know, locked up. And maybe that'll change, but not, not right away, I'm afraid. The other thing is, um, you know, co Congress could help solve this. And because it's locked up, that's a problem. Uh, the, uh, the various governors that have said, well, you know, we're, we're going to change our position on, on the vaccine. Good for them. But my question, and I would leave you with this as my last comment. Um, my question is, um, while I agree that uh, there's, there's a certain change happening, a certain change in the air, um, there is also a certain resistance happening, and that's still happening. And so you have two, two contending lines on the chart. You have, the, you have people who are becoming you know, more enlightened, uh, including some public officials, and also people who are hunkering down as usual, doubling down the Trump mo model. Uh, make no mistake, he's behind this. Um, so the question is, where do those lines meet? Um, can we reverse public opinion on these issues 
quickly enough to subdue the emergency. And the jury's out on that. Yes, both of those lines are in play, but what's the timing? Yeah, the timing's everything. The, as you say, the TikTok of the Metrodome continues. Hey, Winston, um, and last comments, we're out of time, but um, so you, you, you know, the, uh, some of the research you sent shows the trend line of um, those red states. They're starting to get vaccinated now. The, the numbers are starting to slowly shift and the percentages are getting better. Should we, uh, should Joe Biden look at those numbers and say, okay, um, we'll give it us a little more time before I really start cracking down hard or regardless of the trend line of, of, of vaccinations improving, uh, we need to act now and, and act fast. W what direction do you think uh, President Biden should take? He's a pretty moderate centrist person, so he realizes that half the country still isn't there, but they're getting on board pretty quickly. I think even though people don't believe the CDC, they don't believe Anthony Fauci, they might believe their minister, they might believe their governor, they might believe their mayor. And so the messaging needs to really bleed down to people that they trust and uh, have some faith in and their family members, you know, and having a, a generous conversation with them. You know, but when it doesn't help when you have the attorney general of, of Missouri saying he's filing suit to stop a mask mandate in St. Louis County. This is not helpful, but uh, hopefully they will. When you've got one in five people who are uh, resisting this vaccine, believing that chips are implanted in it, you're fighting an uphill battle, but I, I remain confident that we're, the message is getting through and this Delta is freaking people out. And if it's not, it should be because it's a thousand, there's a thousand times more particles. They say that before when it was, you were exposed to 15 minutes with someone without a mask, the equivalent now is one second, one literal second. Because was that an analogy? Was that, that, was that a metaphor or do no, you think no, that's, that's, accurate? that's literal. There's a thousand times more viral particles that they're uh, getting. But uh, the other thing is, is that 90, what is 97, 99% of the people that are getting sick and dying are unvaccinated. The problem is, is when this like this Delta plus, what's next for the people as these things keep brewing? What about Delta plus plus or Epsilon or, or, or you know, Zeta? And this is the concern is that, and we need to do it not just here, but all around the world. So that when the next one comes out, when Lambda comes up or when, when the next one comes up, we're better prepared to at least have the huge majority of our population vaccinated. So slowly, surely through laws, through mores, through uh, leadership, uh, uh, small, large, personal, uh, state, city, local, it all needs to be part of the story. We need to welcome people on board to change their positions to a better position now that they have more information. So anyone that says, I was afraid, yeah, who wants to get a shot of anything? Nobody. But when you realize people aren't dropping dead from this vaccination, they're staying alive because of this vaccination. And I think as, as they're surrounded by it and they're all sick of COVID at this point, we just got to step up and do our, do our civic and personal duty. I mean, if nothing else, Go for the enlightened self-interest here. Get your shots. Well, so you say slowly, Winston, but it should not be slowly. It's I happening think, rapidly. It's happening it's more happen rapidly. rapidly. Yeah. I, and the I, way I, is the way is that Biden must take affirmative action, just like Macron, okay. and and that way we'll get it done. And and I think at this point he's not going to have as much resistance as he would have had a month ago. Uh, well, uh, this I, goes this goes again to our social compact. The, the points we raised at the beginning of this show is. What happened to the social compact that we had with our fellow Americans? I'll, re I'll repeat Macron's comment again. His quote is, uh, I know that you're ready for this commitment. This is, in a sense, part of your sense of duty. The operative word is duty. We have no duty left for our fellow Americans. And maybe sometimes people need to be forced to be reminded of their duty. I don't know. But um, let me go to Cynthia for closing comments. Cynthia, your last thoughts? Public safety laws. We've got lots of them. Why can't this be one of our public safety laws? You know, I mean, you got to put on a seatbelt to get in a car. You cannot drive drunk. All of these things that are laws to keep us safe that none of us like, you know, but, but we do. Well, maybe we like the don't drive drunk one. But, um, you know, it, these, it seems to me that it's the same sort of thing. And what really gets me 
when I hear these anti-vaxxers and these anti-maskers, these, you know, from these main big red states, these Republicans, the very same people that want to, you know, govern a woman's body in regards to reproduction. But boy, they don't want to put a little mask over their face. But you know, they, they don't want the government to tell you you got to wear a mask, but they want the government to tell you that you can or cannot have a baby or, or, or what, you know? If you've been raped, you still have to have that. These same people that are All voting right. thing, where it's, it's, it, it, I think that points out the absurdity of their argument. At least it does to me. Well, if it's not absurd, it's hypocritical. So you get the last word on that point. I want to thank you very much, Cynthia, for uh, making those points. And I'd like to thank everyone, Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, and you, Cynthia, Lee Sinclair, for joining us this week on What Now America. Please tune in next week at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. And I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we'll see you then. Aloha.